For years, when you wanted a gaming laptop, this is what you got. Now, you can get this. Back at Computex, NVIDIA promised us the world's thinnest gaming notebooks. And today we're going to take a look at the ASUS GX501 Zephyrus that promises to be just that. Now, from a specifications point of view, it seems like a pretty typical high-end gaming laptop. You've got a Core i7-7700HQ quad-core processor. You've got 24 gigs of memory, 8 gigs soldered on, 16 gigs in two different DIMM slots. A 15.6-inch 1080p screen. It is a 120 hertz G-Sync panel that actually looks pretty good. It's got kind of a matte finish as well, kind of an anti-glare look to it. It has a 512 gigabyte Samsung NVMe SSD. It's the SM961, which is essentially the OEM equivalent of the 960 Pro. And then obviously the standout here is the new GeForce GTX 1080 with Max Q Design graphics solution. That has uh, a whole bunch of, of weight going behind it, right? So it has the same core count and, and memory capability as desktop GTX 1080s and as the GTX 1080s we've seen in previous gaming notebooks, but this time it's they're, they're bend and designed to run at lower power, lower thermals to fit in these much thinner uh, form factors. The industrial design of the Zephyrus notebook is actually pretty unique. Um, it has a, a different design in terms of the keyboard and touchpad where it is brought very far to the front of the machine. Uh, and this kind of area at the top with the ROG logo on top of it is where you get the CPU, the GPU, the coolers. Basically, Asus had to shift the keyboard and trackpad down in order to make room for the components up top without having the keyboard over it and, and kind of allow them to get to that thinner design specification that you see here. Uh, it, the, the keyboard and trackpad placement creates a couple of problems in terms of ergonomics, right? Normally you're used to having, at least I am, on, an, on a notebook, someplace for your wrists to rest uh, while you're typing on the keyboard, the trackpad underneath it by your thumbs. You have to get used to a different positioning here. The, the trackpad is thinner, which is going to be you know, interesting to get used to, but it's just also off to the side. You are going to have to move your hand every time you want to use the trackpad as your kind of mousing device. It also means if you try to use this on anything other than a table, uh, you're going to run into balance issues, right? If you're trying to actually set it on your lap, uh, the weight is very much uh, towards the back of the device and you've got to move your hands far up on the keyboard in order to get it placed right so it's going to feel wobbly on your knees. And then if you try to use this on something like an airplane with a table tray, I imagine that would be pretty problematic. Now what's interesting about the design as well the other kind of standout feature is this raised platform that you get when you open and close the screen. This actually opens up the airflow on the bottom of the device, allowing it to bring in a uh, uh, higher amount of cooler air into the fans to cool this, both the CPU and the GPU and exhaust it out the back. And it's this design part, the, this kind of design features, what allows it to be so thin when it's closed, when you're carrying it around in terms of portability, but yet when you're using it, it expands a little bit, opens up a little bit, and it allows uh, pretty uh, impressive thermal dissipation for such a small form factor device. Uh, connectivity, we have four USB 3.0 Type A ports. We have a single Thunderbolt 3 port. You have an audio jack and a full-size HDMI 2.0 connection as well. They do ship a USB 3.0 to gigabit adapter included in the box, so if you're worried about having only wireless connectivity on it, you can get wired uh, Ethernet on it as well. Probably a lot of people interested in using this as their primary machine are going to be happy to see that. It does have a very premium fit and finish, right? The design is high quality. You get these kind of brass edges, uh, gold edges along the side. Uh, the keyboard is nicely built. It, nothing feels um, like it's going to uh, fall apart or weak or anything like that. It, it's, it's a high quality build design. And it is also quiet as well. Part of the Max Q design specification from NVIDIA was a designation of a sub 40 dBA level while gaming. And this was clearly the case. We had no issues uh, with, with sound level here. When we looked at GPU and gaming performance on the ASUS Zephyrus Max-Q Design laptop, we expected this to be pretty close to the performance of a consumer desktop GTX 1080, or at least a notebook iteration of the GTX 1080. In our testing, however, this design tends to uh, lean in favor of being about the performance level of a GTX 1070 for a desktop system. Now that's uh, maybe a little bit off-putting for the branding that NVIDIA and ASUS chose to go with for this design, but it is still pretty impressive from a performance standpoint that you can get desktop GTX 1070 level performance in a form factor this thin. 
Um, thermal tests that we ran as well, where we looped Dirt Rally for 45, 50 minutes or so, and ran a benchmark at the beginning of that run, and then ran a benchmark again at the end, just to kind of see if there was any degradation in performance over time, revealed that there was none. And in fact, the performance at the beginning of our 45 minute run and at the end of our 40, 45 minute run were near identical. Uh, leaving us to believe that the, the thermal design that ASUS integrated in the Zephyrus is actually very robust. Looking at general system performance, as it turns out, this machine may be just as impressive or more impressive in that regard than in anything else we've seen with this machine. Uh, the Core i7-7700HQ is the highest performing CPU we've ever tested in a laptop, true quad core with hyper-threading capability. Uh, it's going to run through your video encoding, uh, you know, photo editing, anything you want to do from a prosumer high-end kind of CPU-based workload is really going to shine on this machine. And the Samsung SM961 SSD is incredibly fast as well, you know, reaching 900 and re reaching Samsung 960 Pro levels of performance. So again, if you're moving things around, if you're doing video editing, you know, even 4K video, you're going to have uh, plenty of performance and CPU and storage to get that done on this. Now with most gaming laptops, you have to address the issues of portability and battery life. Those usually suffer in comparison to the rest of the mobile market. I think Asus uh, with the Zephyrus and the Max-Q design have addressed the idea of portability. It's, it's very easy and light and closes up small, so you can put it in a backpack and, and take it with you on the road. Now battery life though, is still a problem. In our kind of Wi-Fi uh, browser-based battery test that we run on all of our machines, we got just under two hours of battery life. So uh, while that's reasonable for a gaming notebook, for something like this that now becomes slightly more portable, a little bit more usable for your everyday machine, your only machine, that's a little bit disappointing, right? So uh, it, it seems like the, the aspect of portability is addressed in terms of form factor, but not in terms of battery life, and that may take another kind of generational iteration uh, from either Asus, Intel, NVIDIA, or all three of those combined to really address that problem. The pricing on the Asus Zephyrus GX501 is $2699, $2699, and that is for the 16 gigs of system memory version that we've been able to find for sale online. We haven't really find, found pricing for our 24 gig iteration there, but it shouldn't be dramatically different, maybe 100 or 200 bucks or so. Now, that's a lot of money for anybody to spend, uh, but in terms of gaming notebook prices, it's not really outside the realm of what we would expect, uh, especially for other machines using similar specifications of quad-core processors, GTX 1080 GPUs, uh, G-Sync screens, etc. cetera. Uh, the closest comparison might be the MSI GT73 VR Titan, which is $21.99 we found for sale this week. Um, that's the lowest cost gaming notebook with the GTX 1080 in it. Uh, has the same CPU, but it does have a significantly smaller SSD at 128 gigs, so that probably makes up for some of that price difference. So while it's not cheap, I will say that the Zephyrus and the Max-Q design here are not um, significantly more expensive than I expected for other gaming notebook designs. My takeaway from the Asus Zephyrus notebook with Max-Q design is basically kind of twofold. Uh, it's impressive that they're able to get the amount of gaming performance into a form factor that is this thin, that also has this many features, uh, kind of embedded through it, whether it be USB 3.1, the 5 gig or 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, the 120 hertz G-Sync display. It's a lot of technology, and I think you would be uh, more than happy with a GTX 1070 level gaming performance on an integrated 1080p display or even hooked up to an external monitor. However, some of the design decisions of moving the keyboard and way up to the front, moving the trackpad off to the side, kind of weighting it out to the back, make the ergonomics and kind of the portability side a little bit less intriguing of an offering. If you were going to use this as your everyday machine, you were going to travel with it, take it to school, take it home, take it to work, whatever you're going to do, it probably loses a little bit of its luster when looking, when looking at uh, it in that particular light. So uh, it's still impressive overall, and I think the Max-Q design has kind of proven itself to be a useful venture. I'm actually curious to try out the rest of the Max-Q designs from MSI and others to see if maybe they have a different take on how you implement this new GPU technology that NVIDIA has created. So uh, check back with us soon, and uh, we have the full review on this, this machine up on PCPer.com, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.